Hey guys, today is a very exciting day for me as a consumer. I am in the Duolingo headquarters and I want to tell you guys a quick story. I got onto Duolingo more than five years ago when I decided to move to Canada and learn French. Now, I never got around learning French completely, but I fell in love with Duo. He's been my partner and uh, I still keep getting complete your streaks from him. So I know I'm very pumped to continue learning French. But as a consumer, I'm super excited to be in the Duolingo headquarters. Now, there are two amazing products that uh, I've personally known of and used. One is obviously the Duolingo app. The other is DET, Duolingo English Test. If you have filled uh, the form for Come to Canada program that Globalogy offers, you know that we've told you to do Duolingo English Test. Take it because it's easy, accessible, user-friendly, cost-friendly, all things good. Uh, but today we're going to go a little bit behind the scenes because I have Rogelio Alvarez here with me. We're going to talk all things fun about DET and really figure out why did they decided to enter this market and disrupt this industry. So thank you for joining me. Uh, tell us a little bit about your journey. What do you do for DET? Mm -hmm. uh, and how did we uh, how did you land up at Duolingo and DET? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to you. Um, I well, I joined Duolingo about 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. Uh, I'm Guatemalan. I was born and raised in Guatemala, and before joining Duolingo, I was working in business, business development, that's my background. Um, and I joined Duolingo because uh, at the time, they were exploring different revenue models for the company, and they wanted to have somebody with a business background that could help them uh, figure it out. What are, what, are, what are the best ways to actually make some money, right? Uh, at the time, it was a very small company. I was helping uh, with translations, which was our first idea on how to make money. Um, but as you can tell, that didn't work out. Uh, then I worked in ads as well, uh, in the first iteration of ads. Uh, and then I worked in the what it was going to become the Duolingo language test. So the first iteration of the test. So I helped put it together uh, with the team who was working on it. Uh, then I move away, and then when the product was finalized, I came back, and then I started leading the Duolingo English Test team. Uh, we were about three, four people, just engaging with institutions, trying to get more accepting institutions, more accepting universities to know about the test. That was in 2016, and since then, I've been just working on the on the Duolingo English Test here at Duolingo. And this was a team of three to four in 2016. What is the team size right now? We're close to 100 people working wow. on the Duolingo English test. Wow. And we're very proud because from that 100 people, we have people almost everywhere in the world. We have people in Canada, in the UK. We have people in India, of course. We have people in China. Uh, we have even people in Singapore and we have people across the US as well. Yeah. And this goes on to show how well DET has been accepted by the community, the, the study abroad community and the universities. Yes. I think it's because we are, as a company, we're a very international company. We really want to help uh, all our users all around the world uh, to get access to better education. As a consumer, I've written IELTS yeah. um, and I obviously did not enjoy the part of going into um, a center and write it, but I just mm -hmm. thought that's the only choice. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure when you were a student, you also thought that there are a couple of choices and those are the only choices. Mm -hmm. What made you think that uh, DET is a product that's required? What made you think that you know Duolingo English Test could be a disruptor and has obviously become one? Mm -hmm. But when there is already a market, where there are already competitors, yeah. why would you go and create a product, you know, which is which already has a very um, legacy take established behind yeah. it? No, that's a that's a great question. We started receiving here at the company. We started receiving a lot of emails from people asking us how they could certify the the, the proficiency that they've gained mm -hmm. using the learning app. Uh, and that made us go back and look into the proficiency testing market, right? And to our surprise, to Severin's surprise, Luis's surprise, my surprise, it was like it was exactly the same as when we were young, which was a long time ago. We are now using a lot of technology to do a lot of things for us, mm. right? Like you want a taxi, you, you use your Uber app or your Lyft app or any app. Um, you can um, order food online, you can order things on Amazon, like all of those things that you can do online and you can leverage the power of the internet, right? And when you think about testing, it's still the same thing, right? It was the same thing about going to a testing center, you know, brick and mortar. You had to make an appointment months in advance, mm -hmm. pay hundreds of dollars, go there, spend your whole day, commute, and then go over the entire stress of actually taking a test with another 20, 30 people in the same room and um, and then waiting weeks for your results, right? Without knowing what's gonna happen, right? We decided to do something different and disrupt the market. Uh, and we decided to give it a try. And, and I think uh, it was more our desire to offer something different and better to our users. 
So from a student perspective, there are so many English uh, mm-hmm. proficiency tests out there. Um, how do you think a student should choose and where all do you think DET makes for a better choice? I think DET, the way that we like to think about DET is like uh, we say the five A's, right? So it's, uh, it's more affordable, more accurate uh, as well. It's, it's an accurate test. It's a good reflection of your language proficiency. Mm-hmm. It's adaptive. Uh, uh, so it uses computer technology like, and uh, it adapts to the proficiency level of the user. Uh, so that's why it takes only one hour or less than an hour to, for you to take the test. It's accepted, like it has acceptance by my, more than 5,000 institutions all around the world. And the other A that we have is accessible. And the, re- the, the fact that you can take it from anywhere. You can mm-hmm. take it from home, you can take it at any time of the day. You don't need to, as I was saying before, you don't need to commute anywhere. You don't need to get in the car. You can just like, wake up in the morning and just like say I'm going to take my test right now or if you're not feeling like it you can take it at night you can take it from the office you just need a quiet space with that computer and good internet access and you're going to be able to do it so uh, I think that's why we feel that this is a much better option for students out there who need to certify their proficiency. How what all can we expect from Duolingo and DET in the Indian market what's Mm -hmm. the next uh, thing or are, are we looking to grow? How are the Indian students going to take uh, to DET? And what's big for the uh, India as a country uh, for you guys for Duolingo and well, DET? India is our largest market, mm. right? Uh, you know, it's a market that has been growing. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of interest of students, of young young Indian students, actually to study abroad, which is amazing. I love I love the fact I love mobility, right? I live in the U.S. I'm from Guatemala. I live in Costa Rica. Now I live in the U.S. I think living abroad is an experience that you have to you need to have like it, it, at least travel abroad and just like experience other cultures, experience other languages as well. Uh, so for the Indian market, um, we know that this is just going to continue to grow. The interest of studying abroad is going to continue to grow. In 2027, the expectation of the projection uh, is that 2 million Indian students are going to be studying abroad, which is a large, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a big number, it's right? A big number. Uh, yeah. And what we want is that we want to help them. Yes. We want to help them prove their proficiency because we know that if they, they want to study abroad and they want to have the best opportunities in, in terms of like education or work or immigration purposes, they need to have a test so they can prove their proficiency and we want to lower that barrier for them. So we want to continue investing in the Indian market so they're aware of uh, the, the, that the DD exists, that mm-hmm. is something that they can use uh, and it is an important tool for them in their journey of actually studying abroad. One program that we just recently launched that is global is not only for India but it's very important in India as well is the global counselor network Uh, so it's a way that we can engage with counselors and and, and agents as well you know agents are very important in the ecosystem right that they work with a lot of students and they give guidance to a lot of these students on how to apply and where to apply and what are the like the test or the or the requirements that they need to meet before they apply. We launched this program and we're starting to work with different agents locally in India, of course, there's a lot of agents and we're already working with a few of them. Or we, have pl- we have plans to actually grow the program in India, so that's one. We also have a partnership with uh, an, an institution or organization called uh, the Next Genius Scholarship program, oh. uh, which we are working with them. And I don't know how, if, how much you know about them, but they go, they are funded by universities in the U.S. They're looking for uh, give scholarships to like very high achieving uh, students in India. In India? Yes. And they oh. and they do a tour around the, right now that we're working with them, which is how to promote and increase awareness of those scholarships uh, across all India. All right. So I have one more question. A lot of people thought that DET is more of a COVID phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of things that fizzled after the pandemic, including my good diet. Uh, I think DET was also uh, something that I think not a lot of us thought would last. Um, But we've seen it grow and you have to tell me how accepted do you think DET is um, and and how has this been able to continue to grow and uh, where do you see it growing next? Well, that's a great question, and uh, and thank you for asking that. Um, we are currently accepted by more than 5,000 institutions or universities across the world, mm-hmm. uh, which is great. We know that there's a lot of more work that we need to do to get to universal acceptance, which is, we think, maybe doubling the number of accepting institutions that we have right now. Um, but we're confident that we're going to be able to get that done in the next couple of years. Um, in the U.S., we are very strong. This is the market where we started. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're parity with other competitors as well in terms of acceptance. 98 out of the top 100 U.S. news ranking universities accepts the DET. 
uh, 14 out of the top 15 in the Canada as well accepts the DET, which is, is great, and 70% of all uh, grad programs in the U.S. as well accept the DET, major grad programs accept the DET as well. It's a test that has been developed by uh, uh, Duolingo, which mm. is a, like a gamified yeah. app on how to learn languages. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mean that it's not backed by a lot of PhDs. We have mm. a lot of PhDs here. We have a lot of people with fancy PhDs who are working on like the research, the validity, the predictability, the accuracy of the, our products. So it has a strong background. And I will say to all these people, if they have any questions about it, they can go to our website. And there's a whole bunch of research that is, it has been published in our website about how accurate it is, how valid it is, and also how, how it compares with other tests as well. Okay. This is just really nice to hear that you're not looking at it just as a consumer market, but also you're really there to make it, make the students' uh, lives better and, and help them take better choices. Mm -hmm. um, I have one last question, which is actually not on the list, so my people here know. Now, coming from India, mm -hmm. you know, our the ideal of friendship, like the, the highest level of friendship, is taking a Goa trip. Most people here would agree, and. I haven't been able to take it with my friends. Nobody has been able to take it. I mean, most people haven't been able to take it with their friends. You have been able to go much beyond that, run a company with somebody you went to high school with. Yeah. What do we do to get this kind of friendship? I don't think we imagined that we were gonna that we were gonna do in, we were gonna be doing this uh, mm. this level of work together, right? We 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 dreamt a lot when we were young uh, and. Uh, I think it was the experience that we had. So we, we spent two years together, the last two years of high school together <clears throat> in Guatemala in a gifted program in Guatemala. It was a scholarship that was given to gifted kids. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't like using that word, but just like, uh, and we were lucky enough to be selected to be part of this program. And that's where we all uh, got together. Actually, Luis and I, and then there were two other friends who went to high school together uh, with us as well, that they were working with us at Duolingo. So it was the four of us that were working here. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and that was very exciting to actually see each other every day and, 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 and work in something that is so close to our hearts as, as, as is education, because Education got us together and, and, and get us to meet and create this friendship with us like more than 20 years ago. I don't want to say how many years ago, but a long time ago. And uh, and through education, we've been able to uh, do a lot of things and achieve a lot of things. But we always wanted to give something back. Yeah. And, uh, and work working together is a way of saying, like, let's just keep that spark alive. Let's, speak that, let's, let's yeah. keep that mission alive. And I think it's part of the culture as well of Duolingo. Because this is a company started on friendship, I, I think... Uh, that's how you've created a culture uh, where everybody's just so friendly, so warm. Thank um, you. Yes, and, and I'm pretty sure people will be able to see it in all the products that you create, whether it's DET or Duolingo. Thank uh, you. So thank you so much. Uh, no, no but we have your best friend that I'm now going to be quizzing next. All right, guys, I'm joined by Luis Juan, I'm the founder of Duolingo. I'm so glad you got Duo to our lives. You have no idea how much we love Duo. Of course, Duolingo and all the amazing products that it creates, but more Duo. So uh, my first question to you, Luis, uh, please tell us something about your own background. How did you think about Duolingo, DET? And most importantly, how many languages do you know yourself? Uh, well, uh, okay, let's see. Um, I, I was born, I was not born in the US, I was born in Guatemala. Um, so I'm a native Spanish speaker, so I know Spanish. I also know English too. Um, uh, so I was born in Guatemala. I came to the United States for college, so I was an international student. Uh, and I came to, to the university here. Um, then um, I got a PhD in computer science. And then um, while I was getting a PhD, I invented this extremely annoying thing, which a lot of people have seen, which is called a CAPTCHA, which is these distorted characters that you have to type on the internet. Or more, you know, lately it is more these things that you have to click, like the, the traffic lights or the bicycles or whatever. It's very annoying. I apologize. I invented that. Um, uh, so that's that's what happened, and then after that, I decided to start Duolingo because I wanted to do something. You know, I had I had done this captcha thing. It became a company. It got sold to Google, and then I wanted to do something that was related to education. And um, this is where I started Duolingo. Uh, oh, you also had asked how many languages I speak. Um, yes. I also with Duolingo, I've learned um, I learned Portuguese, but that's a little bit of cheating, and I got really good at it. But that's a little bit cheating because it's very similar to Spanish. Um, then I learned French, and I'm quite good at it. I, uh, my pronunciation sucks, but I can watch Netflix shows in French. Um, and now uh, I am learning uh, Japanese, which I am really beginner on it, uh, and Swedish, which I'm also really beginner on it.
Wow. Yeah, but I, I don't. No, no, no. Don't count those. The reality is that I am good at four, uh, and that's about it. So, how do you see Duolingo helping the educational aspirations of Indian students? Ah, uh, well, India is a is a pretty amazing market for us. We've been growing a lot in India. It's the fastest growing country for Duolingo. Um, mm. We're, you know, the main language that people want to learn in India is English. Um, so it's, it's people who who want to learn English. It's not the only one, the only language that people are learning in, in India. I mean, uh, you know, Spanish and French and German are also um, uh, well, you know, well learned there. Uh, but I think in general, we can, uh, you know, we really can get people to either learn English from scratch or improve their English, which gives much better educational opportunities, uh, but also better work opportunities, etc. So, uh, you know, we like that a lot. And certainly with the Duolingo English test, all those people that are taking that are usually doing so to get better educational opportunities outside of India. And so we're, you know, we're, we're very happy to be able to support that. So when it comes to DET, uh, you know, there were already so many English proficiency tests in the market. Why would you invest so much energy into a market that already has an established, you know, grandfathered way of going, how things go? Why, why get into this market at all? Yeah, the reason we got into this market was many years ago. We started about 10 years ago. The reason we got into it was um, because we, we already had the Duolingo language learning app. We didn't have the DET. And we started getting a lot of emails from people who were learning on Duolingo. They were learning English and they would say, hey, thank you for teaching me English. I couldn't learn English before. I couldn't afford it. Thank you. I am now learning it with Duolingo. Um, but I need a certificate that says that I know English. And we got enough of those emails that we started looking into the the English proficiency market. And what we found was really crazy. It's um, a few billion dollars every year are spent by people certifying that they can speak English. This is not learning English. They already know English. That's just spent by people who need a certificate. Um, and, you know, there's many reasons why you may need a certificate. One could be to apply to a university, but for a job, all kinds of reasons. And mainly the, the way that people were getting these certificates were, uh, you know, um, taking these standardized tests. And there were two big ones at the time, the TOEFL and the IELTS. There's, there's others, but these are kind of the big ones. Um, and they were they're very similar. Um, both cost about 300 US dollars, depending on the country, but you know, in most countries kind of cost about 300 US dollars. In both cases, you have to go to a testing center to take the test. Most people who are taking these tests are in developing countries and 300 US dollars is a lot. It's a, US, uh, it's a month's salary in for, for most of these people. So we thought, okay, this seems, I, I don't know I don't know why it's like this. It doesn't have to be like this. So we can make our own tests, make it a lot cheaper, and also make it so you can take it online rather than that have to go to a testing center. So we decided to do that. Um, and it's it's interesting. Uh, Ten years ago, we were told you cannot have a test online. That will not work. Uh, of course, after COVID, you know, I think people understand that you, in fact, can have tests online. I'm so glad that you spoke about the archaic way because I've personally written one of those tests and I went through the same pains that you spoke about. So it feels very, very personal that for years, I mean, when you took it, the story was same or probably you went through the same pain. When I took it, it's the same. And I'm so glad that like a couple years from down from that, I don't think this will this painful story will exist thanks to DET. We're very happy with that. The other thing that we're very happy with is the fact that we've actually moved the market. Um, you know, now other tests are starting to go online and stuff like that. So I'm very oh. happy that we did that. Oh, yes, definitely a market disruptor in that sense. What do you think is the importance of English as a language in a, in a market like India? You know, India is, I always say it's like Europe. We all speak our different languages. We have different food. Um, it, it's just, it's very unique in its own sense. And so how do you think English uh, um, would help people bridge gaps within India, outside of India? And, and how does DET contribute um, towards that? Yeah, I mean, English, you know, certainly in, in India, but in, in most countries in the world, First of all, knowledge of English can increase your salary potential. Like that is that is just the case. If you know English, you can make more money. And this is true in, in most countries in the world. Um, uh, and, and there's data uh, for, for almost every country, you know, the countries in some countries is 10% more salary. In some countries, you can double your salary by knowing English. So so there's that. And it generally, you know, it, English is also the can, the lingua franca for the whole world. It is, you know, if you go to a random country, um, you know, the, the, the one hope you have, if you don't know the language of that country is that maybe you both know English. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's the language that is used to conduct business in, in, in most places in the world. Um, so. It's just, uh, 
you know, it, it can transform people's lives. And and in India, you know, I, I've, I've been many times to India. I don't have to tell you about India. You, you know much better than me. But, uh, you know, generally it's this funny thing where everybody speaks a little bit of English. And a lot of stuff gets done kind of in half English and half the language, the local language. So half English, half Hindi, half English. So, uh, you know, it really can change can change how you operate. And, and with the DET, you know, what we're trying to do is just make it so that it is an accessible way to prove to people that you know English. And once you've proven to people that you know English, you can apply for jobs, you can apply for universities, etc. And I know in India there's a large desire to, uh, you know, attend university in either uh, Europe or, or, or the US or Australia or, or one of these countries, Canada. The hope is that we can help at least in, in that step. My next question is coming as an Indian mom. You were able to create a product that made learning gamified, uh, which is not something that happened when I grew up. First of all, how do you think of using a gamified approach? Why, why did you think people would consider it seriously? And how does it uh, work in, in a market like India? Um, how, how does Duolingo help bridge that gap and, and make education and learning more exciting uh, for the young people? Yeah, I mean, with Duolingo, we decided that we were going to make it gamified. There was a big reason for it, and it is that the hardest thing about learning something by yourself is staying motivated. Uh, uh, the reality is you don't need an app to le learn something. You can learn anything you want by just reading a book. You can literally, you can learn quantum physics by reading a book. You can do that. This is in fact possible, but just people don't do it because uh, it's so boring and it requires so much. Uh, the, the hard thing, if you want to learn something by yourself, is staying motivated. And so we decided to spend effort trying to make Duolingo be uh, as motivational as possible by yeah. making it feel like a game. You know, at first we thought, oh, maybe there's going to be some, you know, some people that don't take us seriously. And it's true, some people did not take us seriously at first. But at this point, we have so many users and we've almost become the de facto way to learn languages that even very, uh, you know, stuck up serious people take us seriously and use Duolingo. Um, and, 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 you know, my, my view is that the gamified approach, you know, it's great for kids, but it really helps anybody. Like the reality is we have users from ages six to 100 um, and you know, the game element is one of the things that keeps you coming back. And do you think that this approach has worked uh, with people? I mean, clearly the app has become um, more and more fun, uh, at least as I've used it. Um, so just from your consumers, you see that the gamified approach towards learning is working? Yes. Uh, with the, more, the more gamified we make it, the more time people spend learning. I mean, we, we see that. We, we, we have all the data, we try it. You know, every time that we make a change to the app that makes it a little more gamified, we see that people use it more. My last question is that there's a lot of myth in India that DET isn't accepted um, globally because of its gamified approach um, and that it's not a serious test and it cannot take you to serious places. Uh, what, what do you have to say about that? Uh, because, um, I mean, again, like just as an Indian person, I'm telling you it's very difficult for me, even me, to believe that learning can be fun. First of all, making a distinction between Duolingo, the language learning app, and the Duolingo English test. The Duolingo English okay. test is a much more serious product and does not feel as gamified, etc. There, it's, it's a real test. You know, mm -hmm. it's accepted by very serious institutions. Pretty much every university in the United States, this includes Stanford and MIT, and pretty much every serious institution in the United States uses or accepts the results of the Duolingo English test. We have slightly less acceptance in the UK and Canada, but we're working on that. But the reality mm -hmm. is, particularly if you're applying to a university in the United States, the Duolingo English test is accepted. And, and it's, you know, seen, is very highly regarded just because we have had you know, a lot of the things, even if our design seems very accessible and you know, it's kind of a little cartoonish, the reality is all, not only the test, but also the app, they're designed by people with very fancy PhDs in education or, uh, you know, language assessment, etc. So we have a lot of science behind it, even though it looks uh, a little cartoonish. That's uh, very interesting uh, that you say that because uh one question that I always get from my audience when I talk about a product like DET, you know, which is good and it it beats its competitor on almost all marks is what's the catch? It's, I'm sure there is something amiss. Um, and I, with DET, I think there is no catch except that 
this is a market disruptor and in the last uh, seven, eight years, we've seen the growth, uh, how well it's been accepted. And it is a serious product and it will continue to be accepted uh, universally. So Luis, you have been a student um, who moved abroad to study. You've had that dream. You've been able to achieve it, live it. Can you please tell our viewers what was your story like as an international student? I was pretty clueless about how to apply to universities in the United States. I, you know, I, once I have moved here, I realized people here in the US know a lot about how to apply to different universities that I didn't really know all that much. So I, I looked at US News and World Report and I saw what the good universities were. Um, I also happened to be in a, I was fortunate that I had um, somebody, I ended up going to Duke University for undergraduate and it was a recruiter from Duke University actually visited my school and I think she asked for all the good students and um, you know, somehow they showed me to her and then she helped me with the application, etc. But one of the things that I had to do that I had never really had to do before was take these standardized tests. So I had mm -hmm. to take the SAT, I had to take the TOEFL, etc. And uh, you know, that was pretty hard because I was just not used to that. And you know, particularly in the case of the English test, um, I ran into the problem that mm, my country ran out of English test seats for the next two months and I needed to submit that app, you know, th th those test results by a certain deadline. So I basically fly to the neighboring country of El Salvador to take the test. Um, so that, fortunately it all worked out for me, but this was, you know, it required quite a bit of money and quite a bit of um, hassle to do it. That's very interesting that you mentioned that you had to travel to a neighboring country to take your English proficiency test. I've grown up in India and I actually come from a very small town in India which was uh, three hours away from a metro city and growing up the only thing that we were told was you have to be in the metro city to get uh, to get to anywhere that you want to be in your life uh, otherwise it's all over for you and so we really did the three hour journey to school one way six hours every day um, clearly this is the story of many people in India still a lot of people who watch even my content come from, uh, you know, not tier one cities. How do you think DET can change that and, and how can they make opportunities more accessible uh, to people? Because most of India doesn't live in tier one cities only. I mean, this is what's beautiful about being able to take a test online, that you can take it in from anywhere. You don't have to live in a city. You don't have to even live in a small town. You can live in an extremely remote location and you can take the test. I love that um, you know there's in India there's not testing centers in every in every town so you know we're getting a lot more um, you know places where people are taking tests and not just in India there are many countries entire countries they're not big countries entire countries where there are no testing centers in those countries uh, and uh, we have people taking tests there so I'm I'm just really happy about the fact that we've been able to to increase access that way. No, clearly. I mean, it's just great that now people can at least think of dreaming because when I was growing up, this was not a dream that you could see until you got to the metro city. Um, so thank you for creating a product which is made by the immigrants and for immigrants, uh, future immigrants. It, it, this is just revolutionary. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nidhi. And thank you. Thank you for the great questions.